Hello everybody. I am Tim with Golf Cart Garage. We are back with another Gearhead On Demand segment that we have here at Golf Cart Garage where we answer questions, we answer people's emails that we get uh, throughout the week. We are live on Facebook and YouTube right now uh, at the same time. This is Thursday, January the 13th and we've got a lot to go over today. So let's get started, see if we can save some people some money. Question number one, this is from Steve. It says, I have a question about my wiring on my G22 golf cart. I'm in the middle of putting a bigger motor controller on my cart. My question is, do I need to put new wiring from motor to controller, and if so, what size? Well, Steve, anytime you do an upgrade, like a, a controller upgrade, it's a good idea to go ahead and change your wiring. As far as which wires you want to change, it depends. Are you just going to a different controller? Are you going to a bigger controller? Are you going to, is your car lifted? If it is, the wires that you want to change, you want to change all of your six gauge wires, usually what comes stock that, that, that goes from the uh, controller to the motor and throughout the batteries. It's usually six gauge wire. You could go to four gauge or even two gauge. Uh, if you went to two gauge, you would probably never have to worry about it, doing it again because you, you could do any upgrades in the future and two gauge would handle it. It would be fine. What you're really looking for when you upgrade your wires is you don't want to find any heat in any of your wires. And the big wires, the big six gauge wires are the ones that, that are going to have the most heat. So even after you upgrade them, you drive your cart for a little while, grab every one of those wires that you change and just check them for heat. If you got any of those that are getting too hot, you might have to upgrade to a larger size, but I doubt that you will. Four gauge would be fine, uh, two gauge would be fine. Let's see, number two. This one is also from Steve. I have a 48 volt EasyGo RXV. The batteries had discharged and I charged them back up to 10 plus volts in each with a total voltage of 44. When I plug in my PowerWise QE, it flashes red, green, then clicks off, clicks back on and flashes green, then clicks back off, then clicks back on and gives two red flash sequence. Do you have any idea what my issue may be? Thank you for your help. Well, I'm sure you're aware of this, but all those all those flashes and different colors uh, that the that the charger is giving you, those are going to be fault codes that are specific to that particular charger. So somewhere you're going to need to look up your chart or, or your your troubleshooting sheet for that particular charger in PowerWise QE and see what those fault codes are saying. But one thing that you said uh, in your in your description there, you said you got the batteries charged up to 10 plus volts. That's very, very low still, very low, 10 plus volt. Even if they were 12, you gotta understand, I'm assuming you have four 12 volt batteries in this car because of what you said, you, because of the 10 plus volts each. Even if they were 12.0 volts, that's still considered a dead battery, believe it or not. There's a big difference between 12.0 and 12.37 or 12.4, something like that. So I suspect that the fault codes that you're getting are associated with the extremely low voltage that you have in your car. So once you get those batteries up to 12 volts and they'll be in a much more relaxed state, batteries like to be fully charged. That's when they're most, I say relaxed, but you know, it's, they, they're, they would rather be fully charged than dead. Once they're, once they're fully charged, they're going to make your charger act a little different. It's going to know that it's, it's trying to charge something that's, that's that's in a relaxed state. So it's, it's gonna work a lot better. I suspect that that's what your issue is. So keep working on those batteries to get the voltage up to about 12 and then try this whole thing again. All right, let's see. Number three. This is a, uh, when jacked up and running, the right wheel spins slower than the left rear. Is this normal? I'm trying to find a clicking sound while driving. Well, when you're when you get both back wheels off the ground and you touch the gas pedal, yes, it is normal that one wheel can go slower than the other. In fact, you could I don't know if you've ever tried this yet, but with someone touching the gas pedal, you could grab one wheel and completely stop it. 
and then the other one would spin. And then you could go around to the other side and grab that wheel and completely stop it, and the other one would spin. So it's because you have what's called an open rear end in a golf cart. It's designed that way so it uh, doesn't tear up grass or anything when you, you, know, when you, when you turn, because you, you can't tear up the grass on a golf course. So it's, they use an open rear end. So anyway, what I just said about stopping wheel, that may help you in finding your noise. Like if you stop this wheel and you still hear the noise, then it's only it's going to be you, you know your you know it's not your axle bearing and on this side you know it's not anything to do with your brakes on this side so then you go to the other side and stop that wheel and see if you can make the noise go away or change it in any way that may help you in diagnosing where your noise is coming from let's see number four my club car is hard to start lots of choking is needed to start engine what could be the issue? Well, that would depend. Let's see. If we're talking about a, if we're talking about a two-stroke car, like an older club car that would be two-stroke, one of the major symptoms or one of the major uh, reasons why you would have to choke a two-stroke a lot in order to to crank it in, in old golf carts is would be crank seals. Uh, you know, you got a crank seal under the flywheel and you got a crank seal under the clutch, you know, so, and once those start going bad and they do eventually, you know, the all old two strokes need new crank seals. It seems like once they get new crank seals, everything's fine. You got a whole lot better pressure going to the cart, a whole lot better fuel delivery going, going to the carburetor. So if it was a two stroke, I'd say crank seals. Now, if it's a newer car, if it's a four stroke and you're having to do excessive choking, then you have some kind of fuel delivery problem obviously okay so it's either going to be your crankcase pulse line that's going to the fuel pump it's either going to be the fuel pump itself is not pumping or the carburetor is not allowing fuel to get past like there you could have a stopped up jet in the carburetor so that would be the three reasons that you would cause you to have to do excessive choking because when what you're doing is when you when you choke it you're forcing the car to pump more fuel so in other words, you're not getting enough fuel for it to crank without choking it for some reason or another. Could, like I said, could be fuel pump, could be fuel lines, could be carburetor. All right, let's see here. Number five is replacing my Trojans with lithium ion battery worth doing. I have a club car Preston 2010 lifted car. The way that I would answer that, I would say, what is a, first I need to ask a question, like what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish? Because I understand that a lithium conversion is very expensive. It's, it's still expensive. The price is better. It's way better than it used to be, but it is expensive. I'll tell you the main thing that you can expect uh, if you were to spend the extra money and go to a lithium conversion. Think about it like this. Uh, so you and your buddy are in, in your car or, or in, driving around in your car. Your buddy's a big guy. You're a big guy. All right. One of you gets out like a whole man gets out. The car runs much better with just one person has more power, possibly more speed with just one person because you just lost 200, 250 pounds or what you know, or whatever the person that got out. When you do a battery conversion to lithium, you literally lose 200 to 300 pounds, depending on what you were doing before. So the, what they call in drag racing, is called the power to weight ratio. So the power to weight ratio just went through the roof on your car just by doing the battery conversion because you lost 300 pounds. Think about how, how much better your car will run power wise and efficient wise with 300 pounds lighter and everything else stays the same. Well, it gets even better than that because not only is it 300 pounds lighter, everything didn't stay the same because it's a 300 pounds lighter plus the battery pack itself is more powerful than the, the, the heavy battery pack that you took out. So that increases your power to weight ratio even more. That even makes it better. You have even more power. You have When you hit the gas pedal on lithium batteries, the volts don't drop near as far as they do when you hit the gas pedal on lead acid batteries. So it just depends on what your goals are. And you know, the, you can adjust the range by 
hooking multiple parallel lithium batteries in parallel till you get higher and higher range. So it just depends on what your goals are. If you're fine with your range, if you're fine with everything else, then it might not be worth it for your particular uh, application. But if you would like to experience why Teslas are so fast and so powerful, then do the lithium conversion. Let's see. Number six. This is from Dale. I've been searching for an answer to this question for a while now, and no one seems to have an answer. My club requires us to buy club cars to match what is used on the golf course. We also use the carts in the community on the roads. A new 2001 club car lithium onward can only go 19 miles an hour from the factory. I understand their concerns of liability, but I am driving on, a, on the road in our community, and on the road I need at least 25 miles an hour. What is the easiest and least expensive way to accomplish this with this cart? Uh, well, I was under the impression that they could be they could be programmed. You know, you said 19 miles an hour. I was under the impression that it was closer to 20, like 19.6 or something like that. But that's still not enough. So, if if that's not enough, then you can skip off. You can skip over all that. That, that stuff. That's the easiest and least expensive way is to get club car to program your controller to the highest setting. But I think you're correct. The highest setting is going to be somewhere between 19 and 20. All right. Unless they told you something different on your particular car. I'm not sure. But most of them are 19 to 20. Now, if you want to skip over that and do all this yourself, and then we're not, it's not, not the cheapest. Uh, it's not, we're not going to get any cheap, any, not going to get any cheaper. It's only going to get more expensive from there. Now we sell combo kits, you know, that can increase your speed and increase your torque. You might go to our website at golfcartgarage.com and look uh, for the combo kits that include a, a high, higher speed motor, a controller, heavy duty solenoid, and they even tell in our combo kits, it even tells you what kind of speeds that you can expect to get after installing this in your particular car. So you could go look at that and, and get the highest speed combo kit that you, you know, that you would like. Uh, and if that's still not enough, after all of that is done, then you can always change your gear ratio in the rear end. You can always put higher speed gears in it. And I guarantee you, you can get over 25. I mean, you, you can get as fast as you want when you start going that far. Okay, let's go to number seven. Uh, my electric 2012 golf cart bucks when driving. What causes this? Well, uh, I think I probably said this before, but anytime a customer of mine would describe the symptom in their golf cart as shuddering or stuttering on takeoff, 99% of the time it was a battery related issue. And I don't necessarily mean the batteries, I mean battery related, which could be battery cables, which could be the forward and reverse switch. If it's a series car where all the battery power is going through the forward and reverse switch, you could have a loose connection there. You could have a bad cable, a loose cable that's almost broke that can cause a shutter or a stutter. Now you're saying your car is bucking. So I'm not sure if that's the same thing or not is, is what I was talking about there. But if it's not, it really can only be two things it can only, it could be your uh, potentiometer, whatever type potentiometer you have in your particular car. Uh, and then uh, batteries themselves. You could have a battery that's just that's just dropping out and then coming back on, dropping out. You got to have all good batteries for a golf cart to run correctly. So that would be the things that I would want to eliminate first. All right, let's see, number eight. This is from Jim. I have a Yamaha G22 and I'm replacing the drive clutch. I have the removal boat bolt, but I think the thread on the clutch may be damaged. Do you know what the thread size is to allow me to re-tap the thread? I understand what you're saying. You're talking about the thread inside the drive clutch, because the, but I, I don't know the, the thread size inside the drive clutch, but if you have a, if you have a thread gauge, that's what this is. Can you see that thread gauge? why not put the thread gauge on the bolt? 
you know, and see see what size the threads are on the bolt, or the clutch removal bolt. Now, and I'll tell you this, I have had before, and it was even on a Yamaha, I bought, I had to change a clutch, and I bought a really, really inexpensive clutch puller bolt. Very inexpensive, like the cheapest one I could find. And when I went to use it, it was so far off that I was afraid to actually screw it into the clutch because I could tell that it was not fitting. Uh, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't fitting the threads right. Also, oh, I just thought of something. You can check the threads on the original bolt that the clip was holding the clutch in. You can check the threads on that to figure out what the threads are. But anyway, it, it, it was so far off that I couldn't even use it. It was, it was unusable. So that made me, I went straight to Yamaha and got an OEM Yamaha drive clutch uh, puller bolt just to see if, if I was you know, crazy or not. And the, the OEM one went in perfect. It was absolutely perfect. So some of the very inexpensive ones, I, in what I'm saying, have the threads are cut a little bit off and I would be leery of forcing it in place. So you're on the right track with trying to figure out what the threads are and, and, and make sure that you get a good one. All right, this is from Tony, this is number nine. Had my garage put new batteries in my six-year-old golf cart, but it does not go as fast as it did with the stock batteries it came with. Battery ratings put in are higher than stock batteries, and yes, all connections seem secure. Okay, obviously, if all you did was change the batteries, then the golf cart should not be slower. It should not be slower. So my first question is, and I've seen this before, uh, did you put the right batteries in the golf cart? I have seen people put a set of 36 volt batteries uh, in a 48 volt golf cart. I've seen people put a set of 48 volt batteries in a 36 volt golf cart by accident. So that would be my first question. And once we cleared that up, then I would just make sure that they are hooked up correctly, positive, negative, positive, negative, on down the line throughout throughout all six batteries. All right, let's see, number 10. I have an RXV and I have to turn the key on and off a few times to get it to go. I changed the key switch once and it worked for a while, but it's doing the same thing. Okay, um, are we talking about gas or electric? Because that would that would change my that would change my thoughts on this. But let's just say that we're talking about gas. You're on a gas cart. If you had to, but you you change the key and it works. So that 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 does make me suspicious of the key again. Uh, if you changed it and it worked for a while, because it, it it shouldn't have worked for a while if it, if if nothing changed there. Yeah, the pedal stop switch, you know, it, it could be something to do with that, but you, you might think it's because you were wiggling the key, but you could have been because you just hit the pedal again and you unfroze the pedal stop switch. So it could be that. Uh, if it's an electric car, it could be, uh, it could be the, the potentiometer that, that an RXV uses. There's a, a micro switch inside there. It could be that. But I'm still focusing in on the key because you said you changed it and it worked. So uh, did you get a, a an OEM key or was it an aftermarket, uh, very inexpensive key? Because it, it could be something to do with that. You might have to change that key again. But sounds like you're on the right track. All right, this one is from Steve, number 11. I have an EasyGo TXT 36 volt cart and I have 38.6 volts coming out of the pack and the solenoid clicks and I have 38.6 volts at the motor. It was running perfect and one time I pushed on the accelerator and started to accelerate for about five feet and then it just stopped instantly. And now when I jack it up and try to accelerate, the wheel tried to turn but just won't turn. Any suggestions on what to check or ideas on how to fix this? Well, when you say you, when it's jacked up and you turn the key on and you hit the bass pedal, the wheels try to turn. In other words, they bump a little bit. I hate to tell you this, but that is a symptom. I'm not, not saying that this is 
you know, definitively what it is, what your problem is, but that is a symptom of a bad controller. Uh, I would have questions if this, is this a lifted car? Is this a, a PDS, uh, easy go PDS, or is it a, is it a lifted easy go PDS? Cause PDS cars don't actually like to be lifted that, that much with taller tires. They don't mind the lift. They just don't like the taller tires cause it puts more of a strain on the controller and the controllers end up going out. So I'd have questions about that, but it's, that is a symptom of a bad, of a bad controller. Okay. Let's see. Number 12. This is from Mark. I have a G2 cart. How do I know if clutches are bad? Well, you know how you have your drive clutch in the front connected to the motor and you have your driven clutch in the back connected to the transaxle. These sheaves, that was what they call, that's the area where the belt rides on the drive clutch. The sheaves need to be even and perfectly smooth on both, on the drive and the driven clutch. Look at the sheaves, you know, rub your finger down there, make sure everything's perfectly smooth and they're, they're at a, a, a good angle. They're going to be at an angle like that, you know, on both of them, the belt rides in the center. Then on a G2 cart, you can crank it in neutral. Uh, I used to have a G2. You can crank it in neutral, put it in neutral, just put your gear shift in between forward and reverse and crank it up and rev it up and watch your clutches. If your drive clutch squeezes in as you rev it up and the belt goes all the way to the top and then you let the RPMs go down and then the drive clutch goes out, the belt goes all the way back to the center, then there's nothing wrong with that clutch. If the driven clutch, when you rev it up, if it spreads out as you're revving it up and the belt squeezes in all the way to the bottom and as you let off the gas pedal the belt goes all the way back and rides to the top if it does that there's nothing wrong with that clutch if it's smooth operation between those two clutches as you're revving the engine and watching them and they're squeezing in and then spreading out in the rear and then you let off and they do the opposite if you've got smooth operation between both of those clutches as the rpms go up and down there's nothing wrong with either one of them uh, so that would be how uh, anybody at a golf cart shop would, would look at your clutches and see, you know, if, if they, if they were suspecting a problem there. Okay. Let's go to number 13. Uh, this is from Brian. Hi, after wiring my new summit two charger and having 50 plus volts, I went to drive the golf cart. And when I pressed the throttle pedal down and don't get a click from solenoid. So I got nothing. What might be the issue? Okay, my, my question would be, did this just start happening uh, after you wired your Summit 2 charger in place? If so, did you hook up that blue wire? There's, there's three wires, you know, depending on how you, how you configured your Summit 2 charger. Uh, because it sounds like you might have the blue wire hooked up and you're getting a lockout signal, you know, because it, 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 there's a blue wire that, you know, included with the Summit 2 charger that you can use it to, to have a lockout to where your cart won't move while it's on charge. Uh, it sounds to me like it's very possible that you might just need to unhook that blue wire and see if everything works. Okay. Number 14. Check voltage to LED headlight bar on a 2016 Club Car Precedent, and it's showing 16.8 volts, but only six of the 12 LEDs working. Any suggestions? 48 volt system with brand new batteries. Well, on the on the Club Car LED light bar that we sell at Golf Cart Garage, it is designed to be used on a 12 volt system. Now, 16.8 tells me that your uh, LED light bar is running across two eight volt batteries. That's why you're getting 16.8 volts. You should be using a voltage reducer uh, in that system because that's, that light is designed to be used on a 12 volt system. Uh, that could be your whole issue that those bulbs may be burned out because they were being used off of too high a voltage. So you're going to want to check into that and you might end up having to get a voltage reducer in order for it to work correctly. Number 15. This is from Randall. I 
sometimes I have to tap the accelerator pedal several times to start moving. It happens, it appears that the wiper arm is not making good contact. Can the potentiometer be the problem? It, is it adjustable to correct wear and contact issues? Well, it, it depends. If it is a V-Glide, because a V-Glide has what, you would, what I would describe as a wiper arm, and, and the old style club cars have what I would describe as a wiper board with a, with a copper contact that goes across a board and it's all open and you can see it. So it, the, the V-Glide, the newer ones with the V-Glide, it is slightly adjustable. And that, you're right, it does need to be flat on the contact and you got to look at it from the side to make sure that it's flat and then watch it as it goes up and make sure it stays flat across every contact. Now, the wiper board, the old style wiper board is really just a bunch of copper contacts. They're round copper, uh, round circular copper about the size of a pencil eraser. And then the wiper board has a copper, the wiper arm has a pencil eraser size copper contact on it. And as you push the gas pedal, it scrubs across each one of those. Now, those are more likely to have bad contact than V-Glides are in general, but V-Glides can, they can be adjusted also. So, a lot of times when the, the old style is bad, when you, you can watch it, when you push the gas pedal, like get on the golf cart with the seat off and actually kind of drive it and watch that area, you might see sparks coming out of that area sometimes. And about the only thing you can do with those is like sandpaper, put a little sandpaper on every one of the contacts and make sure it's a good smooth surface and see if you can fix that. But a V-Glide can be, there is a slight adjustment in a V-Glide. Now 16, this is from Terry. All wires are hooked up to the right terminals but no power to controller because of no green light on front of controller. Can the vehicle harness Nevada's TSX controller for EasyGo PDS 36 volt be the problem? Well, I don't know if you got into this part of, of your problem or not, but that Novartis controller that, that you have, it has got a lot of functions. It's got a lot of functionality. You can get the app and go into it with your phone or your iPad. You can see all kinds of things, including fault codes. So if you're not getting the green light on the controller, it's most likely throwing a fault code. So you need to get familiar with the app that, 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 that uh, Novartis uses for their controllers and you might, it might point you exactly to what the problem is. All right, let's see, number 17, this is from Joseph. Hi, good afternoon. I was wondering if I changed my speed controller on my electric motor. I have a 48 volt cart. Will that make my cart go faster? Let me know, thank you. It's a 2012 club cart precedent. Well, you said speed controller on my electric motor. I think what you meant to say there was speed sensor. Now, the speed controller is inside the golf cart, but there is a speed sensor on the end of the electric motor on a club car precedent. And yes, there are things out there called high speed magnets. It's basically, the speed sensor is basically a magnet. And they have, uh, we don't, I don't think we sell any high speed magnets at Golf Cart Garage, but they are, there are some available out there on the internet. Uh, they claim to give two, three more miles an hour. So it, they're not very expensive. So if, I mean, it's not like you would waste a lot of money if it didn't work. I've never tried a high speed magnet. So I, so I, I wouldn't be able to tell you directly. I just know that they're, they are popular. They're, they are available. You just, uh, look up high speed, uh, look up high speed, speed sensor magnet for a club car precedent. And you'll probably see some come up. Okay, number 18. What do I need to replace the front bushings on my 2016 Club Car Precedent? Uh, well, we sell a complete bushing kit, if, if that's what you're asking, that's part number is SPN-0030, SPN-0030, 
0030. That's a, a complete front bushing kit for a club car precedent. Uh, I don't know if that's what you're asking, if you're asking what tools are needed. Uh, you're basically going to need several tools to replace all your bushings. Uh, the, the best thing to do would be go ahead and st start tackling the project, raise the front end of the car, take your wheels off, and then you'll figure out what you need from there to get to those bushings. There, there's several. I think there's 12 that, that come in the kit. Okay, number 19. How to change the max speed of an Evolution golf cart with a Curtis controller and lithium batteries. Now, the three major manufacturers of golf carts, Club Car, Easy Go, and Yamaha, it is easily adjustable to plug into the controller with their specific computers. Yamaha has theirs, Easy Go has theirs, Club Car has theirs, and adjust the speed of the golf cart slightly. Not a lot, but they can adjust it slightly. Now, depending on which controller Evolution uses for their car, that it, it may be possible, but it's going to most likely have to be done by an Evolution golf cart dealer. Uh, uh, you can go to, you just look up evolutionvehicles.com and, and, and get a phone number to, you know, check with them to see what would be the best course of action to see if it can even be done. It would just depend on their controllers that they use, which, whichever Curtis controller they use. There's several Curtis controllers out there, so it just depends on which one they use to see if it could be programmed or not. Okay. Number 20. I have a Yamaha... 2007 G22. My problem, sometimes the cart won't run. If I rock the cart or flutter the accelerator, it will start. I changed the brushes in the starter generator and it worked great for a day, but now the problem is back. Could the problem be the accelerator stop switch? Uh, the answer to your question is yes. The problem could be the accelerator stop switch. The fact that you've already eliminated the brushes is good because the symptoms are almost the same. But you've eliminated the brushes by putting new brushes in there. I've seen both scenarios. I've seen where it was the pedal stop switch and it was uh, bad brushes in a different, you know, completely different car and they act exactly the same. Sometimes the, the starter generator would turn over, sometimes it wouldn't and it had a brush that was sticking. And same thing, same symptom when it's a pedal stop switch. Sometimes it would turn over, sometimes it wouldn't. So, and the good news is pedal stop switch is not real expensive. Uh, so you'd be able to figure that one out real quick uh, on that. And you wouldn't have to spend a bunch of money on that in, in case that was it. All right. Let's see here. Let's go over to Facebook and YouTube, see if we have any live questions. Doesn't look like we do on Facebook. Let me check YouTube. No, nope, not seeing anything there. All right. Looks like that's going to be it for me this week. Uh, we're getting into January, cold months, so let me give you a Tim's Tech Tip for this week. Get your plan together for keeping your batteries charged. You know, a lot of people, a lot of our market here uh, that we, we sell to, they they leave their golf carts for long periods of time and you know for half of the year so it would be a good idea to have some type of plan to keep your batteries charged while your cart sits there over the winter you know especially for people up up north uh, batteries can freeze but not fully charged batteries so if you got a plan to keep your batteries fully charged you'll be way better off when you visit your golf cart next year uh, you either need to have some type of you either have a neighbor come over and charge your car every now and then or you need to have a summit 2 charger from golf cart garage but you need to have your plan in place to maintain your batteries the most expensive part of your golf cart and that was tim's tech tip for this week so anyway i guess the garage is now closed and we will see you next week